Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I'm continuing off in my discussions about what will actually happen when we have a blue ocean event. When we have no Arctic sea ice, how will that affect the heating? How will that affect the, the distribution of heating on the planet? How will that affect the jet streams, all these other things? But, you know, I'm really um, focusing on the amount of additional heating from, from zero sea ice. And I'm talking about a recent paper by Pistone et al., that argues that there that globally with no sea ice in the Arctic, the the global the average heating will be as high as 0.71 watts per square meter. To give you an idea of how much heating that will cause, the that would be equivalent to about a 57 part per million rise in CO2. Since the emissions and land use changes of, of those effects on warming um, when our emissions about 44 percent end up in the atmosphere the rest are absorbed in soils and in the oceans and stuff but um, basically um, the loss of sea ice is equivalent to an additional one trillion tons of co2 emitted up into the atmosphere now considering um, up to now we've emitted about 2.4 trillion one trillion from loss of Arctic sea ice equivalent is a huge amount. In fact, it's 40% of all the warming up to now. So when we have no sea ice, and when the duration of no sea ice gets longer and longer, we're in for a hell of a warming ride. So let me get into the details, continuing um, from where I left off before. But before I do that, um, you know, for people that need their fix of this guy, um, he uh, decided to uh, take a nap on me. Uh, not surprising. Let's see if I can. Let's see if we can do get get him to stir here. Hey, no, nah, he's pretty much out for the count. We'll leave we'll le we'll leave him alone here. Shackleton the Explorer. Okay, so I was um, discussing the albedo of various surfaces here. Because just to give, like, so water does, this is if light is coming straight down from the sky, sun is overhead to the surface, 90 degree angle. It's called normal incidence on the surface. Um, water, the reflectivity of water is very low. Ice is um, intermediate. And snow can be, uh, can you have a huge variation. So fresh snow, you know, over 80% reflectivity. You know, old snow, just over 40%. So when you replace the snow and ice with water, the Arctic gets much, much darker. I've talked about the overall Arctic reflecting 52% of the incoming light um, in 1979 and as measured by the series satellites. And I'll show you the curve over time. But by 2011, it drops to 48%. So the Arctic is getting a lot darker, absorbing a lot of solar radiation in the summer causing huge Arctic temperature amplification, huge warming of the Arctic compared to the equator, slowing the jet streams, making them wavier, causing all these extreme weather events and threatening our global food supply. Um, you can see other things like soils, dark soils here. Forests are fairly dark. You know, you go to savanna, grasslands, a bit lighter than forests. So higher albedo, meadows, crops, big variation. Canola will be very reflective, for example. You know, desert sands, if they're yellow, you know, somewhere in here. Uh, dry soils, wet sand, it's darker. Dry sand is lighter. And then you get the snow range. You know, the, the snow reflectance depends on the size of the snow crystals, depends on the water content. Um, you know, as the snow gets darker, you get dust and stuff on it, and you get some melting and refreezing and melting, so the albedo drops. And then this is the range for clouds. These would be rain clouds here, cumulonimbus, a lot of water content, darker clouds, lighter clouds, just those puffy cumulus clouds, stratified, so lines of them stratified, and then cirrus clouds, ice crystals, and so on. So there's a range here, just to give you an idea of the albedo or reflectivity of all of these um, different materials. Now, water is a very special case, so let's have a look at water. I showed you water down here. 
okay? Very low reflectivity at normal incidence. If you Google reflectance versus incident angle water in Google Images, you can get this plot. So if you're looking at the horizon, P polarization is parallel to the horizon, S polarization is vertical. The way, the way light is, it's an electric field oscillating. If it's oscillating this way, it's P polarization. If it's oscillating this way, it's S polarization. Sunglasses only let through S. Most of the light that hits the water and reflects up to your eyes is P. Um, so the sunglasses block out that glare. That's why they're, they're basically polarizers. If unpolarized light or circularly polarized light is an average of the two. So what you can see here is this is the reflectivity here. It's very, very low at normal incidence. Now the angle of incidence is measured from the normal. Okay, so 90 degrees will be this way. Okay, glancing incidence. So, you know, as the light comes at a very, very shallow angle over the water, the reflectivity goes to 100%. Okay, you, the average would be the unpolarized light. So what you can see is, so basically, as the sun angle gets lower and lower and lower in the sky over the Arctic, you know, there'll be less and less light absorbed into the water. The, the reflectance of the water will be higher and higher. Of course, that's going to be modified by wave action. That will be modified by different algae and things in the water, for example. You know, um, white caps versus just... Uh, you know, rolling waves, things like that, okay? Uh, when there's white caps, those are what, you know, a lot of froth and whiteness of the waves, the reflectance will be, will be higher. So the roughness of the water, the larger and larger the waves will modify these curves, but it's important to know sort of the, the uh, basics. So uh, basically, now what about snow? Reflectivity of ice versus angle of incidence? Lots of different curves, lots of complexity here. Um, but basically, uh, there's a good, very good article here talking about sea ice insulation. It's by this Open Mind site, excellent site. This is from 2012 in this case, but it talks about the difference in sea ice changes between the Arctic and Antarctic on the reflectivity. Um, and basically, this is the sea ice insulation effect. So in the northern hemisphere we're losing sea ice so there's less and less light being reflected. In the Antarctica we were gaining 1.5 percent of ice per decade so there was an increasing reflectance there but the drop in Arctic far dominates. The drop in Arctic was about 329 terawatts between 1980 and 2010 and the rise in Antarctica was about 53 so obviously the the loss of Arctic ice is, was dominating. And then there's what happens when there's, if there's clear sky over the ocean, this is the top of the atmosphere albedo. So this is clouds plus sea ice. And you can see clear sky over the ocean increasing the reflectivity or the albedo increases with the angle based on that curve I showed you. Okay, uh, based on this curve here increasing with the angle. Um, and, you know, if it's clear sky over dark sea ice, um, the, the albedo is here, you know, higher, and then it increases with angle of incidence, clear sky over bright sea ice, cloud over dark sea ice, cloud over bright sea ice. So you can see the effect. So dark sea ice or no sea ice, it gets darker and darker. Uh, but the clouds do have a, 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 do modify this, and the angle of the sun, the solar zenith angle, does modify this as well. So I just want to give you a flavor of some of the different factors that are involved. So also the um, size of the ice versus the reflections does modify things as well. Now, this is, um, this is the reflectivity of ice versus angle of incidence again. And I was getting more plots and things. I came across this paper, Reflective Properties of White Sea Ice and Snow. This is open source. You can Google this paper if you want to get the details. But it talks about the gray, you know, white ice 
Ice is a highly scattered and granular layer on top of its surface and snow covered ice occupy a large part of the sea ice area. And it talks all about the reflectance of different types of ice, you know, light from diff using light scattering measurements and theory. Um, and, you know, it depends on the grain size of the ice, melting and refreezing, um, the angle, the direct incidence versus the angle and so on. And there's a lot of details in here. You've got different types of snow, You've got different wavelengths. Of course, there's a spectral dependence because depending on the wavelength of the light and so on. And there's lots of calculations and stuff in here. But this, I won't go into the details except to say that, you know, people are looking at this sort of thing. And then you can calculate the um, reflectivity based on different angles of the light, based on different wavelengths of the light and things like that. OK, so there's lots of stuff here. And then reflective properties. This is some interesting stuff. If it looks like this, this is the albedo as a function of wavelength. So, you know, visible is 0.4 to 0.7 roughly. So this is a visible wavelength. So the blues have lower albedo, you know, right in the middle. Uh, greens, you know, the highest albedo. And then the reds, lower albedo from a surface like this. This is if there's some openings, this is different. So there's different types of surfaces and you can generate these curves. Um, so this type of surface here, 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 right? And you can get, you can get a, a, a basically curves for each of these type of surfaces. So if you look here, you know, it's very bright. You know, we're up to 90, 95% here. You know, this is 88%, it's, surfaces are getting darker. Notice the scale's changing here. This is about 80% reflectivity. You know, and then you go down to here and it's darker and darker. This is only 35%, 35 to 40% reflectivity. You know, and the wavelength dependence does change. But like I say, the visible is roughly in this range here. Um, so you can see, uh, you know, and now we're dropping down. This is snow covered ice. Okay. Um, you know, so you can get all of these curves for these different types of things. So this is only 35% reflectant. OK, so, you know, different plots, different extinctions, different absorption coefficients and so on. OK, so obviously, you know, basically the gist of it is the darker the ice, the darker the color, the more absorption there is, that, that light will be absorbed, cause heating and cause more melting, et cetera. But it's a really it's a really interesting paper. So now we're back to to this paper here, which is the key thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, so. You know, and it's worth me going into a lot of details. Now that I've given you some background, there's dramatic Arctic sea ice retreat. This has reduced the top of the atmosphere albedo. That's not, that's the sea ice albedo. That's the surface albedo or reflectance, but also the clouds. You know, you're at the top of the atmosphere. It's a total reflectance from everything, clouds and surface. And that adds more solar energy to the climate system as the Arctic is getting dark, darker. There's uncertainty regarding how much ice retreat and solar heating will occur in the future and so on. So basically they say that the worst case, and this is, this is being realized, the complete disappearance of Arctic sea ice through the sunlit portion of the year. Assuming constant cloudiness, and I've said this number, the global radiated heating will be 0.71 watts per meter squared relative to the 1979 baseline. We've already seen 0.21 watts per square meter from 1979 to 2016, I believe. Um, and this is equivalent, the 0.71 globally is equivalent to 1 trillion tons of CO2 emissions. That would take, basically that's 25 years of emissions at the present rate. So let's go into the details here. Okay, uh, you know, of course the Paris uh, targets are two degrees or 1.5 degrees. How, how can we achieve those? It's not possible. Especially, you know, as we continue to lose sea ice, it will rocket us, rocket us well above the, um, the, these temperatures. Um, now, climate models um, suggest a wide range of levels of sea ice retreat, but they're not, all of the models are under predicting the loss of sea ice. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm going to have to uh, continue on another video. So... Thank you for listening and, uh, you know, please tune in to my next uh, video. Thanks for listening.